This meeting is being recorded. Hi, everyone, and um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're excited to do this because we're going to go over something that we've just learned about. And, you know, we're excited to share it with you. We definitely want to hear your comments on it. So tell us what you think. Um, this, uh, we're going to be going over the seven churches, seven seals, and Matthew 24. And are these three the same? And we'll be discussing that each of the seven churches correspond to the seven seals as well as Matthew 24. And we'll be reading the verses that correspond to the seals and Matthew 24. Um, we have done a video on the seven churches in full, if you would like to hear more information concerning these. And we also believe that once you hear this study, you will realize that the seven churches are not talking about the past seven churches, um, but they're talking about the church as a whole and the different issues that we'll face during the end in times. Um, we want to just stress once again, we say this pretty much in almost every one of our videos. We do not um, teach pre, mid or post tribulation for our studies. Um, and that's as of now. And we always tell you to be ready as if um, we will be here for the entire seven years. Um, and being ready is good in the event we are. You know, you know the things to look for. Um, we pray for a pre, um, but only God knows if that will happen. If it is a pre, praise the Lord. Um, but regardless, if you're saved and, and you, you've accepted Jesus into your heart, we're going to be just fine. Um, so let's get started. We're going to talk about the church of Ephesus first. Which is and the in first church in um, Revelation. I forgot. But that's yes. the first church. Okay, um, and you can actually find that in Revelation um, 2, verse 2 from the King James Version. Um, and I'm going to read the verse for you. I know, thy I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thee has left thy first love. And Jesus is their first love. Jesus gives a positive and a negative feedback. Jesus is telling the church of Ephesus what the positive and negative aspects of this church will be during the first year of the 70th week of Daniel. And we're actually doing a study right now as we're already in the fifth week. But if you've never studied the 70th week of Daniel, we also encourage you read your Bible, but the, the videos are also very helpful. Um, and, you know, this will begin as soon as the first seal opens. Um, do we want to be like this church and leave our first love? And I can tell you, I don't want to leave my first love. I don't think any of you do either. But this happens to a lot of people when they become Christians. They become of the world and they backslide, leaving their first love. We come back to our first love by being in the word, praying, loving our neighbors, uh, witnessing to other people, and most important of all, loving the Lord God with all our heart, mind, and soul. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And you can find that in 1 John um, chapter 2, verse 15. And due to Paul's teaching in Ephesus, he disrupted the trading of idols to the point a huge riot broke out. Paul was hurting their business. Um, and we see that now. I mean, if, if someone's coming against a business, um, you know, a lot of problems break out. He told them their great goddess Artemis would be worthless and she would be thrown down. The city was in an uproar over this and grabbed Paul's companions and Timothy was martyred by the Artemis worshipers who were chanting, great is Artemis. Is this what they will do during the end times? I personally think so. Grab Christians and drag them into the streets like they did Timothy while yelling, great is Allah. During this time, the one true God and the false gods were in a battle, just like they are today. Jesus is commending them for bringing out deception of false prophets and messiahs who attempt to spiritually overcome the world. 
they were disliking the deeds of a group called the Nicolaitans, which is a word that is derived from Nikaya, which means overcome. The word for conquering is overcoming, as we discussed and immediately upon breaking of the first seal of Revelation, the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel starts. It has been thought that Ephesus means the desired one. This name reflects the spiritual battle that is beginning on earth between God and Satan, where both desire the souls of believers. Satan counterfeits false messiahs and false prophets will burst upon this world scene like never before. And, and we're seeing that. If you watch the news, you can't deny it. Um, we're going to be putting a study together, and we'll probably have it to you, you know, probably towards the end of the week. But something very blasphemous occurred today. And um, I'm sure some of you may have seen it on the news. But we basically have religious leaders, political leaders, standing on what they are claiming as Mount Sinai and requesting um, the 10... What exactly are they calling it, Barbie? The Ten Commandments. Ten, the, the Ten Commandments for the environment. Um, this is very blasphemous. Um, and like I say, we're, we're putting a study together on that just to make people aware. Um, but let's go to Revelation 6-2 from the King James Version. This is the first seal. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given to, unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer, and that's to overcome. Conquer means overcome. Mm -hmm. um, by returning to our first love, Jesus tells us we will be able to conquer or overcome the other seals. And he will give to us to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. This is Jesus' promise to us. The Greek word for white horse, if Nikaya, meaning to overcome spiritually or to deceive Ephesus, was of Asia Minor and very rich as well as a highly pagan city. Their economy centered on the worship of Artemis, the moon goddess. The Islamic god Allah is the moon god Artemis, was also the god of fertility a huntress who was killed with a bow, just as the white horse comes with a bow. This first seal will be the deception of false messiahs, and it appears that the church is initially able to test and then recognize these false messiahs and prophets. Check your news right now, too. Israel, um, they're, yeah, claiming yeah. They're, they're claiming that they're, they have a messiah, um, and it's a false messiah. We're just telling you that flat out, but you can look that up. It's all over the news right now. Um, so let's take a look at Matthew 24 based on what we've just read. And this is also coming from the King James Version. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. Matthew 24, 11 states, and many false prophets shall rise and, thus, and shall deceive many. Matthew 24, verses 24 through 26, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if thou shalt say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. One thing I want to say, too, before I continue, a lot of people think it's just going to be the Antichrist. That's not what the Bible says. The Antichrist, you'll know when he's, you know, the abomination of desolation occurs. He's in the temple and he proclaims himself to be God. You're going to see many, many, many false messiahs come forward here in the end times. So don't be deceived. Um, the Muslims are waiting on their messiah as well, as the Jews are waiting on theirs, which they believe will be two messiahs. Therefore, many will be deceived because they do not recognize the true messiah has already come. And that actually has already occurred. That's why, um, you know, the the 70 weeks of Daniel, we believe is beginning to, to start. Um, 
but the Jews did not recognize Jesus as their Messiah. And the Messiah was right there with them. And they still didn't recognize it. That's why we, we stress it's easy to be deceived. Don't do that. Stay in your Bible. Um, imagine if all these alone show up at the same time. Jesus commends the church for being able to not be deceived and recognizing them as false. We will also need to be able to do this, especially if we are not raptured prior to the tribulation. We are to love our enemies and not hate them, but to hate their actions. So this verse, verses line up with the first of the seven churches, which is Ephesus and the first seal. You can also find this in Mark and Luke for today's study. We're going to just use Matthew. This is the Olivet Discourse where the apostles asked Jesus how they will know when the end is here. And Barbie, can you start going over the church of Smyrna and seal number two? I can, yeah. So as you can see with the first church of Ephesus, you know, in, in the old days, especially, we were always taught those seven churches, and I believe pre-trippers believe this, were um, Jesus's words to them at that time, but it doesn't make sense. Why would you give those churches at that time these instructions if it's mm -hmm. time for the end yet, one. Two, the book of Revelation is a book of revelation, things to come. And mm -hmm. it's about end time. So why would those churches be, why would those letters to the churches be the old churches? It's not. It's, it's the different churches that are in today's time. You've got ones that are old, one that are hot, one that are lukewarm all the things you're gonna learn about it, it, you know, so I know a lot of pre tribbers believe because of those seven churches then being that the seven churches are talked about in second, uh, second and third chapter of Revelation that because they're no longer spoken about that we must be pre trip out of here because the churches are gone. Well, no, <laughs> that's talking about the churches that are gonna be here during the end time. I believe, um, because even after we're raptured, whether it's pre, mid, post, pre wrath, whatever, after we're raptured, there's still going to be people that come to Christ after the rapture. Mm -hmm. They have to have churches inside their homes and inside of hiding places to meet. So they're going to have to have instructions. And Jesus. You know, in Matthew 24, the verses we gave, he's telling them, make sure nobody deceives you. Many will come in my name saying I'm the Christ and shall deceive many, and there'll be many false prophets arising. Now, I don't know if you guys watched YouTube, but there's tons of prophets just all of a sudden coming up out of the blue. And they're more of a new age type belief system. It's totally different. In fact, I did a video on how to recognize a false prophet, if y'all want to go back and watch that. Um, but that's interesting. And, and several of these prophets that I watch, they are so wrong. They're always wrong. I mean, but yeah. they always come back with a reason. Um, we didn't pray enough. We didn't do this enough. You know, and it's never an apology. I was wrong. I misunderstood. It's always another reason. Mm -hmm. And right now with the elections, they were all prophesying we were going to have this big tsunami, red tsunami. Well, we didn't. Yep. I think we didn't get some seeds, but we certainly did not have a red tsunami, you know, and they've been saying Trump's uh, number 45 is coming back in office for two years now. And that hasn't happened. You know, I mean, so there's so many things that they say and it's not happening. So it has to make you go, okay, are these some of the false prophets? So if you compare the first church and Jesus commending them for recognizing false prophets, okay, recognizing and calling out false prophets, um, it corresponds with um, Matthew 24 that we gave you the verses for. And then it also corresponds with that first seal. You know, we are, you know, a lot of people thought that first seal was going to be the Antichrist coming on the scene. And, and, and it probably is, but he comes to deceive. He brings false prophets. He brings false messiahs. 
So those three really do tie in. And um, okay. the Church of Smyrna now, and it really ties in as well. It's quite interesting. Um, so in Revelation 2, 10 through 11, and we're doing the King James Version, fear none of those things which thou suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He that hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt at the second death. So a second death, what that is, is, you know, we die. And let's just say, we won't even talk about cremation. We'll just talk about a traditional death in the days where everyone was buried. And this, this includes people who are cremated too, but... Um, at the end times, what's going to happen is the dead in Christ will rise first. Mm -hmm. And then the Christians on earth will meet them in the air. That's at the rapture. Dead in Christ. Only the people that have accepted Christ will be raised from the dead at that point. People that did not accept Christ are going to stay in their coffins. We mm -hmm. made it and scattered. Whichever one we did. They're going to still be there, but only the dead in Christ will rise. Okay. Second death is at the end of the thousand year millennial at the great right thumb judgment. That's when those people rise from the dead and they face God. And he judges them at that point, And that's when they are passed into the lake of hell fire. Okay? Mm -hmm. That is a second death because they died first rose from the dead and then they're cast into to the fiery grave so that is a second death okay so <clears throat> and then when it was talking about some of you will be put in prison some of you will face death that's jesus speaking in a, of martyrdom okay he's talking about during the end times many will be put in prison many will be put to death because of him okay um, this, you know, the letter is speaking of during the tribulation and persecutions that Christians can expect, and they can also expect to be poor because they're going to lose everything. People that are still here are going to lose everything. They're not just, you know, if you don't take that mark of the beast, you can't buy food, you can't buy a car, you can't do nothing. Okay. And this can be um, poor economically or spiritually. Okay. Let's think about the Great Reset, the New World Order where they're wanting to take our assets away, okay? Mm -hmm. During the tribulation, we can expect to be killed for our beliefs. I mean, Christians are already being censored, and we know based on, you know, millions have been killed for their Christianity uh, in the years past. Um, but we're already being censored big time on these stations, on any of the social medias. All right, Smyrna, the, the, the name Smyrna means myrrh or death. Myrrh is a spice used for embalming, and it was also one of the gifts that was given to Jesus by the wise men, and it represents death. Will, be, will the Christians be imprisoned or placed into a FEMA-type camp, or both? Uh, will we be blamed for the unrest in the world? We already are. Seems that's what number 46 has said, especially if that... Uh, little meeting thing he did with all the red behind him and the marines behind him you know mm -hmm. jesus tells us not to be afraid of those who kill the body he also warns us to fear the one after he has killed his has authority to cast you into hell all right revelation six three through four this is the second seal and when he had opened the second seal i heard the second beast say come and see and there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Okay, so during the second seal, the world is experiencing war between ethnic groups and nations and peace is being taken from the earth. The second seal will initiate a time of bloodshed, war, chaos, and death. During the time of Caesar, Smyrna was chosen to become the temple warden, and it was made a capital crime to refuse to worship the emperor. 
sounds like the Antichrist. He's going to put a statue together and we're going to, and people are going to be required to worship it. Polycarp, he was from Smyrna and was martyred for his faith in Jesus. The Romans attempted to burn him at the stake, but the fire did not touch him. Finally, the Romans ran a spear through him. The Great Tribulation does not actually begin until the midpoint of the Tribulation, which is three and a half years prior to the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Christians will, however, experience Tribulation from the beginning. The Church of Smyrna says, we will be killed by the devil and be thrown into Tribulation for 10 days. Is there a little, literal 10 days or is this symbolic? The days of awe in the Jewish feast are 10 days, and it's time for repentance. If it, is this maybe a time for repentance? Does this mean 10 years in reality? In some places, in the Bible, a day represents a year. Firstly, I'm not sure what that means. Does that mean we'll be put in like a FEMA camp for 10 days before we're murdered? I don't know. You know, that, that's one that's kind of questionable. We're not 100% sure. So then you go to uh, Matthew 24, 9 through 10. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Matthew 24, 13 says but he that shall endure to the end the same shall be saved okay so you can see the the second church which is smyrna revelation um i mean the second seal and that part of matthew 24 are the same mm -hmm. interesting huh and i, I do. thought matthew 24 was like birthing pains you know we would see these things happening before the rapture and before the seals started opening, the tribulation started and stuff. But now I'm seeing that they all tie together. And it's quite mm -hmm. interesting. Um, Flora, you tackle the third seal in church? Sure. Um, so let's talk about the church of um, Pergamos. And in Revelation 2, um, verses 14 through 17, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast denied my faith, even in those days where Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who also Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth. Um, since his letter to Pergamos, and that's Turkey, just so you know, and Jesus states he knows where the throne of Satan is. I think we can deduce the throne of Satan is still there. It's believed that this was the altar of Zeus, and human sacrifices were done here by burning people to death. Hitler put his podium for speaking at this exact location, except his sacrifices were done in concentration camps. In addition, Obama had his stage made to look just like the altar of Zeus in 2008. His human sacrifices were through abortion. Erdogan, president of Turkey, began asking for this altar to be returned to Turkey. This is set to be completed in 2023. It's been used for human sacrifice throughout history. Will this be where the saints are persecuted and killed during the Great Tribulation? Seems like it could be a very strong possibility. Um, Pergamum is in Turkey, and Turkey is celebrating their 100th anniversary of the Lowland Treaty, 
Is this a link to the creation of the Gog Magog Alliance? President Erdogan is trying to say the Lowland Treaty will expire in 2023. However, nothing indicates there is an expiration date. Erdogan is also trying to push by this expiring. It could be the time to recreate the Ottoman Empire, which this treaty dissolved. Jesus is criticizing the church for eating food sacrificed to idols, but offers the faithful some of the hidden manna. During the end times, the Christians will not be allowed food, trading, etc. However, the people that take the mark of the beast will be allowed all of this. Food given to eat of the idols. Jesus is also saying that to those who overcome, he will give hidden manna. In other words, he will provide food for us. In Revelation 6, 5 through 6, this is the third seal. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. After this seal opens, we are seeing economic collapse, price fixing, and famine. If we become a product of the government through a great reset, this will cause us to be poor. Economies are crashing and food is short. Kind of sounds familiar. Um, <laughs> I think we're beginning to see the beginnings of that. Um, Matthew 24, 7 states, For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. The Greek word for earthquakes is seismos, which means shaking, shock, earthquake, storm, agitation, or commotion. Famines is a lack of food, and pestilences is diseases. Um, and like I just said, what I just read, and, and you're going to hear other things, too, that we're going to read. Um, we're seeing some of this already. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it nowhere near to the degree it's going to get. It's going to get a lot worse. But I'll just use an example of the grocery store. I mean, the shelves just aren't stocked like they used to be. Sometimes the things I want, they don't have. Um, we're seeing some of it now. What do you think, Barbie? Mm. Yeah, because right now we're eating on 2021 food. You know, we all mm -hmm. are behind. And if you read like what the farmers are saying and stuff, they're predicting us to be about 50% reduction this year based off crops. Um, you're looking at the droughts, the floods, all these different things. Plus fertilizer is costing triple to quadruple. And so even if they can afford to get the fertilizer to grow the food, um, it's it's going to be astronomical in price. They're predicting a pound of hamburger to be like three hundred dollars by this mm -hmm. time year. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you might want to learn to become a vegetarian pretty soon. But that's even if you can get the vegetables. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's countries already starving. Um, yeah, it's definitely coming. And where it talks about a penny for a, a, a thing of wheat or barley, that's a day's wages back in Jesus's time, um, mm -hmm. or a denarian or whatever. That that is a uh, wage, a day's wages in Jesus's time. So basically, what that's saying is our day's wages is going to cost us just to get a loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's going to make the Great Depression look like nothing. Yep, it's gonna be I agree. Yeah. Um, okay. So now, and you know, and that's why I pray we do get raptured out of here before it gets that bad. But because there's always a chance we might not, we need to prepare. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it does say, you know, we do believe Jesus is going to take care of us and God's going to take care of us. And, you know, and most, maybe the food that we, you know, and I think it's going to be more so for the people that prepared because he's telling us to. And, you know, if we've got food and we've been preparing, I think he'll multiply it so that we can help people, kind of like with the five loaves. What was the purpose of telling that story? The two fishes and the five loaves. Mm -hmm. so we fed 5,000 men. 
That doesn't even include children and women because they were never counted. So it doesn't even include them. That was just 5,000 men off of two fishes and five loaves. So what was the purpose of telling that story? Yes, it's a good story. Um, Jesus was humanitarian. He made sure to, you know, he was loving. He made sure these people were fed. What was the other way? Was it to show us that that's what's going to happen if we're preparing? This little boy came prepared to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, he brought food. He was prepared. And that, and and I don't. It doesn't say that in scripture per se. It's just my own. I agree. God will multiply and provide what we need if we're a child of the God. He's going to protect us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go on to the fourth church, Church of Thyatira, and that's in Revelation two nineteen through twenty eight. I know thy works in charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works. And the last be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which called her, calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idol, idols. <laughs> And that's where I say, be real careful for these prophets out there that everybody's listening to, you know? You know, mm -hmm. several are teaching the rapture is not going to happen for 100 to 200 years. Well, maybe not, but maybe, you know, maybe it isn't, but maybe it is. But it doesn't matter because Jesus clearly tells us to watch and wait and yep. be ready. And if you're teaching his flock, it's not going to come for 100 to 200 years. Then you're going to sit back and think, OK, well, we'll just do this then. Because and, and you're not going to prepare and you're not going to be ready. So, mm -hmm. you know, I see that and it, it really bothers me. Um, so that's given, you know, given. So, you know, that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. Who was Jezebel? Jezebel was Abraham, Ab Ahab's wife, who was like a president of Israel back in Old Testament times. She was evil, 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 evil. And um, that's who he's referring to these prophets as is these is Jezebel so just a thought and okay and I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not behold I will cast her into a bed and then that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds in other words whoever is following these false prophets you very well could end up in that great tribulation which is when the mark of the beast comes out and all that. You don't want to do that unless you repent, you know, and that's what he's saying. And I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches, searches the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other, none other burden, but that which you have already held fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keeps my works unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. Mm -hmm. This refers to himself as the son of God. And he promises authority over the nations to those who overcome and to threatens to throw some of this church into the great tribulation. This letter speaks about the beginning of the great tribulation, as does the fourth seal. So you got to ask yourself if this was meant for a church way thousands of years ago why is he talking about the great tribulation with them mm -hmm. you know we got to think about that um and the fourth seal talks about the great tribulation well as well in addition he does not want them to eat food sacrificed to idols he is telling us that he does not want us to drink from the cup of the lord and the cup of demons we cannot share from the table of demons and share in the lord Revelation 13, 16 through 17 talks about the mark of the beast. If we take the mark to be able to buy food, we will be eating from the food 
served to idols. Regarding Jezebel, Jesus is speaking about Jezebel, the queen of Israel, who was married to Ahab. She was very wicked and an evil woman during her time. In this letter, Jesus clearly states, whoever commits adultery with her, he will throw into the great tribulation. This has to be speaking of future events. The Jezebel mm -hmm. during this time is believed to be someone who calls herself a pro false prophetess who teaches and leads God's servants astray. So they commit acts of immortality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Jezebel is also used in prophecy as a symbol to represent a religious system. The woman in Revelation 12 is Israel. Mm -hmm. Revelation 6, 7 through 8, which is the fourth seal. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and behold, a pale horse and his name that sat on him was, de was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. This seal is referring to the Antichrist when he sits in the temple of God and proclaims that he is God. This is called the abomination of desolation. The Antichrist speak blasphemies against God and Jesus. John 2.2. 2. Who is the liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Psalm 2 is also about the fourth seal. That is for me, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. I will surely tell the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son today. I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will surely give you the nations as your inheritance and the very ends of the earth as your possession. You shall break them with the rod of iron. You shall shatter them like earthen ware. This is Jesus' promise to the church. That they will reign over the kingdom of the Antichrist with him in the millennial kingdom. So that's Jesus' promise saying that, you know, if we overcome, and we follow him and all that once the tribulation is over and Jesus comes to earth and reigns from Israel over all nations and serves with the rod of iron that we as the overcomers and the people that you know followed him will serve with him that that's mm -hmm. cool that's cool it is mm -hmm. in the fourth seal God also grants to kill over a fourth of the earth with a sword and with famine and with pestilence and by a wild beast of the earth. So God has granted the beast. Now, if you remember in Revelation 13, it talks about the Antichrist and the false prophet, and it calls them the beast. Satan mm -hmm. is the dragon, but the Antichrist and the false prophets are beast. Okay. So God has granted these beasts authority to wage war with the saints, Christians, and defeat them. He also grants authority over every nation. This is the same authority that was given originally to the beast for 42 months, and then this authority will be given to its rightful owners, us. This would make the fourth seal sometime around the midpoint of the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Hey, Flora, you want to go ahead and swing on over to Sardis, the church of Sardis? Sure. Um, the church of Sardis we find in Revelation 3, verses 1 through 5. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know their works, that thou hast a name, and thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Sardis is a stone that is white with red streaks. 
which is as perfect as the fifth seal martyrs receiving the white robe. White garments are also a sign for us receiving our resurrected, resurrected bodies. The fifth church sardis is talking about the martyrs who were killed during the great tribulation. It's a letter of instruction to those who are about to get martyred during the great tribulation. It's Jesus' instructions to the ones who will be experiencing the most difficult time in their life. This is not a letter to a dead and faithless church like so many have thought before. Jesus also says he will come like a thief in the night to those who are not awake. This can only come to those who are still alive. This letter cannot be a universal letter. It must be to an end time church. Jesus cannot come to those like a thief in the night if they are already dead. So let's look at what Matthew 24 verses 9 through 12 says. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and become lawlessness will be increased. The love of many will grow cold. And then let's take a look at the fifth seal and see how all this ties together. We can find this in Revelation 6, verses 9 through 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. After the fifth seal is broken, we see martyrdom, witness, and apostasy. In the letter to the fifth church, Sardis, we see death. It's called the dead church now. Martyrdom is a physical death of the faithful, and apostasy is the spiritual death of those who have fallen away. Jesus is instructing the faithful to witness during the difficult part of the Great Tribulation, to strengthen the things that remain. In other words, to strengthen the brothers and sisters that are still alive and have not fallen away or been martyred. This one's very powerful. and. Um, you know, it talks about receiving the white robe and you're, there are going to be people that will be martyred. A lot of people will be martyred. You've got to stand firm in your faith. Um, it's why it's so important right now that we witness and we try to, you know, show people how the, the path and how to ask Jesus into their hearts. Um, it, me and Barbie's talked about this and I'm just going to share it. You know, you read that and, you know, sometimes you may feel fear come into your heart. But I firmly believe that, you know, if, you, if you're a martyr, I don't think you're going to feel a thing because you're going to be so overcome with the Holy Spirit that you're standing up for your beliefs in Jesus. Um, there's nothing to be scared of. Jesus is going to take care of us. Um but it is something to kind of worry about if you haven't asked Jesus in your heart or if you've fallen away from, from Jesus. Um, you know, study your Bibles, get close to Jesus, and, and know that he's always got you, he's protecting you, and you have nothing to fear. And, um, Barbie, I'm going to let you go into the Church of Philadelphia. Um, I've always okay. loved studying Philadelphia. Yeah. Well, and I was going to mention this, too. I, I, you know, I thought, I saw, when, I, when you read this about the... Um, uh church of sardis in verse three chapter three it says wherefore therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent if thou therefore if therefore thou shalt not watch i will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour i will come upon thee okay and then he says it again in matthew uh, okay, now it talks about, um, you know, where Jesus is talking about he's going to come on you like a thief in the night. 
if you're not watching. Mm -hmm. Okay. So many people take that verse and say, Jesus is coming like a thief of the night. We're not going to know mm -hmm. hour or day. No, it's not what it says. It says, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hope fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt know, know what hour I will come on there. On upon mm -hmm. As if you're not watching. Yep. So no, we can't actually sit here and say Jesus is coming back November 14th at 2.42 p.m. You know, 2.42 p.m. where? <laughs> the time mm -hmm. zones, you know. There's no way to pinpoint it to that day. We can't even say November 14th because it's already November 15th in places like Japan. You mm -hmm. know, so you can't. But you can pinpoint based off of all the signs. Mm -hmm. You can pinpoint. Like we know that 1948 started the fig tree generation, which started the last generation. We know that a generation is 70 to 80 years. And we know that Israel is 74 years now. So we know we're coming towards the end, mm -hmm. well, cut towards the 70th week of Daniel, you know, because, mm -hmm. um, but we're going to go on. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why this came over me, but it just, it just came on me. I'm going to state it. Um, you know, it's talking about a thief and, and to be ready. And yes, I do believe that definitely ties into in times, but for some reason it came on me too, that, you know, some people think, Oh, I've got tomorrow, you know, I've got next year. Even it kind of ties in, not even to just end times. I mean, we're not promised our next mm -hmm. breath. We need to always be ready. And, you know, mm -hmm. yes, I do believe we are in the end times. And I do believe that verse is tying to end times. But that just came over me for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the Lord talking no, to me. I, I mean, we so need to be watching and waiting and being ready mm -hmm. all times because we don't know when mm -hmm. this breath is going to be. Now, we're, we're talking about this in regards to end times. That's why we're saying mm -hmm. wait. But, yeah. In general, we really, we really don't know when our last breath is. Mm -hmm. and, and and like I said, that just came over me. But I think that's a good verse to just apply to every day of life. We need to be ready because we're not promised our next breath. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, be ready. Like like well, we're talking you know, about. It, it was like a lady I know. She was in fine health. Not mm -hmm. much. Be a couple years older than me, but pretty good health. And here I am having, I've had, you know, been diagnosed with cancer six times. You would mm -hmm. think I would have been the one that would have dropped dead first. Mm -hmm. Not a good way to put that, but you get what I mean. <laughs> you know, I you would have thought I would have been the one because I've had the cancer six. I've been diagnosed. I don't like to say I have cancer because it's God's cancer, but I've been diagnosed six times and she had no diagnosis and she died of a heart attack. Boom. Mm -hmm. You just never know. We need to be ready at all times. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know why, like I said, that just kind of came on me and I felt like I needed to share it. So Yeah, cool. All right. So I'm going to go on to the Church of Philadelphia and you can find okay. Revelation 3, 7 through 12. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that open and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man opens. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and no man, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make thee them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hours of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I quickly hold thou fast, which, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man taketh thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. 
and I will write upon him my new name. That happens after the tribulation ends. And um, New Jerusalem, I think that happens, yeah, during the millennial, New Jerusalem will come down. And mm -hmm. those thousand years that Jesus is reigning, it's going to be cool. It appears that is um, that Jesus um, is referring to Christians during the end times. Jesus has the key of David and is in charge of who comes in and out of that door. No man can shut or open this door. This letter is about the rapture as well as the parable of the ten virgins, specifically the wise virgins who are the church of Philadelphia. If you haven't done a study on the virgins, you might want to. It's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Revelation 6, 12 through 17, this is the sixth seal. And behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken in a mighty wind. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. And it's and you know the earth is shaken so hard from this big earthquake. That's why the mountains and stuff are moved out of their place. Mm -hmm. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Now we've talked about that before. Um, wait a minute. And it said to the mountains and rocks, "Fall on us and hide us from the face of Him that sitteth on the throne and from." the wrath of the lamb this now of course that sixth seal is going to happen more towards the end of the tribulation a lot of people think it's sick you know first seal second seal third seal and all that but no that sixth seal is not going to actually happen towards the end during the wrath of god um and we have done a study and i don't remember which one it was but we talked about where a lot of these elite people who have a lot of money have been buying homes built in caves in the event of an apocalypse now the army's been doing that or the military's been doing that for years you know making places in there for uh safety reasons to go to but now the elite are being known to go in and buy these places so that they'll have a place to go in the event of an apocalypse and it's interesting that the rock they're going to be begging the rocks and stuff to fall on them mm -hmm they don't have to face the wrath of God because at that point they're going to know they're going to know yep. and it says and then it says for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand and then Matthew 24 29 immediately after the tribulation of the shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the power of the heavens shall be shaken and so, Flora, do you want to do uh, Laodicea? Sure. Uh, the Church of computer, sorry. Okay. The Church of Laodicea, we can find this in Revelation 3, verses 14 through 21. And unto the angel of the Church of La Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spoo thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art, art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eyes salve that thou mayest see as many as I love I rebuke and chasten be zealous thereof and repent behold I stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door I will come in to him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, 
even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his in his throne. This letter is speaking about the ones who are left behind and the wrath of God. This door is also shut and Jesus is standing at the door knocking. And if anyone hears his voice, he will come unto them. We know that there is a door in heaven in Revelation 19. John sees heaven open and a white horse with Jesus upon it. There is obviously a door that Jesus and the angels can go to and from with. In Revelation 8, um, verses 1 through 5, we see the seventh seal. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And after the seventh seal, the wrath of God falls on the earth. There is still an apostate church in the seventh church of Laodicea, which means trial of the people. And it involves the trial of those without saving faith. Jesus tells them that he wishes they were hot or cold but not lukewarm, meaning he wishes they were hot and have saving faith and thus finding themselves in the year of God's wrath. Jesus still knocks on the door and asks them to still come to true faith before the end. And these verses are so powerful to me because of all the churches, to me, this one is the one that received the more strenuous words from God. He doesn't want hot and cold. You can't be lukewarm. You either fully give your faith to Jesus or you don't know Jesus. You're not, there's no in between. You can't um, eat at the Lord's table and the demon's table and Satan's table. Mm -hmm. um, these are, are so powerful. And unfortunately, I kind of feel like, in the, especially in end times, I think we see a lot of this. Um, you know, you got the feel good and people think, you know, if I do works and things and it's, it's, it's helping people, that's going to get you into heaven, but that's not it. You, you're serving two things. You're still of the world. You haven't accepted Jesus. So, so important. Just, we've done some videos on this as well, especially about prayer and studying your word. Um, you got to make sure you got to make sure that you're close to Jesus. You've got to have asked him into your heart. Follow him. Don't turn to the ways of the world. Um, let's look at Matthew 25, 12, about what it says about this church. Um, no, I actually, that was a typo. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry. about that. That's okay. I didn't even realize I had not taken it out. Yeah. That's okay. You know, after, you know, we're, after reading all this and putting it together and, Looking at all this, it's like I see it in such a different way. There is mm -hmm. no way that those churches are from the past. That is correct. We agree with instructed to for the churches what they need to do um, now. You know, and mm -hmm. Philadelphia is the one we clearly need to definitely be Try to strive for. even in yep. Laodicea where he's a little upset with them, you can tell he's still saying, if you will, you know, if I knock on the door and, and you open it, I will still come into you. He's still mm -hmm. at the end. He's still giving people a chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. All the he's way a loving there. God and all he wants is for you to accept him. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's such a simple and easy gift that he gives us. And I don't know any other word to say. We're just stubborn. I mean, we don't want to let go of pleasures of the world, but you don't understand the feeling of love that comes over you is much more greater than the feelings of the of what's going on in this world. Mm. 
you know, and you've got to look at eternity. You want to spend eternity with, with Jesus. Mm -hmm. he, he's our father. He created us. He loves us. Um, there's just no better feeling. And it's hard to put it into words, but I'm trying. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. Okay. Let's summarize a bit. And if you guys, you might okay. pause the video and get a pen and paper right now, if you're still with us. And I hope that you are, because I'm going to summarize everything. And so um, you can write down which church, which seal, which Matthew part um, goes together. And then you can go into the Bible and do your own research and look into it. Pray. Ask God to, you know, to give you this. Mm -hmm. Ask God to open your eyes and show you and see. And if you realize that that is possibly a case, then that's where we kind of got to stop and go. Wait a second. Some of those pre-tribulation theories aren't exactly right. But you can still find discrepancies in mid and post. So that's why we always say prepare as if you're going to be here and pray we go early. Because you don't want to be deceived in thinking that, oh, this mark, this isn't the mark of the beast because the rapture hasn't come yet. You know, what if you were wrong? Mm -hmm. you know, and, and the rapture is not going to come until later. There's always that chance. So we have to be very careful because as you can see, we've already kind of debunked the churches being from the past, which is a pre-trib theory. Okay. Yep. So, you know, that's why we got to be careful. Not saying we won't be raptured before it gets bad. Not saying that at all. I'm just saying we got to be careful. Mm -hmm. and make sure we are prepared because there's so many things that we can be deceived by. <coughs> okay, and okay, so let's summarize this a bit. I hope y'all are ready. Um, the first letter is the Church of Ephesus and is identifying false prophets and false messiahs. This is also referenced in Matthew 24, 4 through 5, 24, 24 through 26, and it's also the first seal of Revelation 6-2. The second letter is to the church of Smyrna and is identifying with the beginning of persecution. This is referenced in Matthew 24, 9-10 and the second seal of Revelation 6, 3-4. <clears throat> the third letter is to the church of Pergamos and is identifying to famine and food. Also, Satan's throne and the mark of the beast. This is referenced in Matthew 24, 7 and the third seal of Revelation 6, 5 through 6. The fourth letter is to the church of Thyatira and mentions the beginning of the great tribulation, as does the fourth seal. Also, the abomination of desolation. <clears throat> this is referenced in Matthew 24, 15 and the fourth seal of Revelation 6, 7 through 8. The first four seals are believed to be the beginning of the birth pains that Jesus mentions, the first mm -hmm. four seals. The fifth letter is to the church of Sardis and talks about the martyrs killed during the great tribulation, as does the fifth seal. This is also referenced to Matthew 24, 9 through 12, and the fifth seal is in Revelation 6, 9 through 11. The sixth letter is to the Church of Philadelphia as, and is referring to the rapture. This is referenced in Matthew 24, 29 and the sixth seal of Revelation 6, 12 through 17. The seventh letter is to the Church of Laodicea and is referring to the ones left behind and the seventh seal refers to the wrath of God where those left behind will have to endure. Now on this one, I left it blank and I'm gonna let you guys try to figure out where it's referenced in Matthew. So look it up and see if you can figure that out. And it's gonna be in 24, Matthew 24. And it's also um, referenced in the seventh seal of Revelation 8, one through five. So these letters cannot be past letters to past churches as they clearly show they are letters and instructions for the church during the end times. 
Um, we would like to say a special thank you to our Lord and Savior for giving us the word that we can study, find, and learn from his words. We would also like to thank Brenda Weltner and Nelson Walters for doing extensive studies on these topics. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, honestly, by looking at that, I would have, I had gotten in there and listened to videos and listened to teaching and studied and we had, and Flora had not done it and all that. I don't know that I would have ever picked up that they all connected. And when you put them together like this, it's clear that they, they all go together. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the verses from the different um, books of the Bible, mm -hmm. they're basically saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I never picked up on it till we, we kind of came across this teaching and mm -hmm. you dug in and got a little bit more information on it for us. Um, you did a great job putting this together. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fun putting it together. It was it was tricky because it you know it was something that I had not ever been taught before, and so um, mm. but and so as I'm being taught and I'm studying, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is so cool! This is so cool! I had no clue because I always thought the seven churches were from the past and that the church is gone after chapter mm. three, so we have to be pre-trip, and I've always thought that. You know, and I'm not saying we're not going to be raptured prior to the tribulation, but it makes me realize that Jesus clearly tells us to watch, mm -hmm. be ready, but he doesn't necessarily tell us for how long of the tribulation to watch and be ready. Mm -hmm. So we need to watch and be ready always, but we also need to watch for all these signs, you know, so that if we're not, we're not deceived. I mean, you know, I see this one guy, he's got a chip in his hand now, and it opens his front door, it opens his car, it does all these cool things. Well, you know, what happens if a year or two, three from now, they come up with something that has our medical records and our, all of our identity, everything on it, and we're like, oh, cool, all we gotta do is scan. Well, the rapture hadn't happened yet, can't be the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. and what if we're wrong yep. and you take that mark of the beast because once you do it's done mm -hmm. it's over yeah it is. Yeah. well thank you guys I appreciate you so much for tuning with, in with us again and please leave a comment and let us know um, what you think about this good, bad, or ugly but be nice um, and just kind of give us an idea. And you can always find us on Rumble. I'm going to put everything in the description box. You can find us on Facebook. I'm going to put that in the description box. I put some left behind letters in there. And you're welcome to print and copy as many as you want. Um, I'll put our email address in there. And you can find us on any of that. Um, and there's also a link for a rapture kit that's not ours. We link someone else's, but you can go to their website and look at a rapture kit and what to get ready for. And, you know, it's kind of like getting ready for a nuclear war. You want to know the truth. You're making sure you have supplies and, you know, and all that. But yeah, go check it out. And Flora, do you want to say anything else? And then you want to close this? Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's watching. And definitely, um, if you wouldn't mind, share. Um, once again, this is not glory for us at all. We are just wanting to get the word out and hopefully, you know, some people will come to know Jesus as our savior. That's, that's the only goal of these videos. Um, so let's have prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for bringing us all together to study your word. Lord, we thank you for your precious word. And most of all, we thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for our sins. We thank you, Lord, for covering those sins with your blood. We believe that you rose from the dead. And, Lord, we definitely believe you're coming again. And we'll be able to spend eternity with you. And, Lord, we pray that you would give us the courage and the words to spread your word to everyone we come in contact with. We pray, Lord, that you give us discernment as we study the Bible, Lord, that you know, you just keep opening our minds and, and helping us put the pieces together. And Lord, I, I thank you for Barbie. I thank you for the time that we've had over this past year, almost a year and a half now to study your word. And, and 
we thank you for helping us to put these videos together and put them out for people um, that we hope that they learn. And Lord, just I pray that every viewer that whatever issues are going on in their life, Lord, that they turn to you in prayer. Um, knowing that if they have faith as small as a mustard seed, nothing's impossible. And Lord, we just thank you. Um, if we have someone that's listening, that, you know, you're feeling that tugging on your heart and that tugging is the Holy Spirit touching you. We ask that you just repeat this prayer and ask Jesus into your heart. Um, you know, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. Please come into my heart and save me. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to learn your word and to grow closer to you and to fellowship with other people that can help. And Lord, if we've had someone to say that prayer, help them to reach out to either us or to someone else that, that can help guide them and, and answer questions they have. Lord, protect us and just bring us all back together again and just watch over all of us and lord we thank you we love you we give you all glory and praise and we ask all this in your precious name amen thank you and i think mm -hmm. he told us in the sixth church or seventh church laodicea that he he still wants you to come to him mm -hmm. well yep. thank you guys for stopping by and hopefully we fly soon i'm praying Mm -hmm. So hopefully we will. If not, you just keep putting your chin up and just keep witnessing and keep te teaching people and keep learning and stay in the word. Okay. Yep. Uh